What's going on, Cowboys faithful? It's your boy DMV back with another one, man. We're here to talk D Law's situation. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday, but I wanted to, you know, talk about it with a clear head in the morning. And before you do anything else, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell each time I come out with content. All right, y'all ready for the real? Because this is why y'all came here. Uh, quite frankly, I saw it coming. Um, I don't know how you guys didn't see it coming. Um, the way that the Cowboys run football operations. It's like used car salesman, man. Steven really be thinking he out there really finagling and, and, and willing and dealing. But in, in all actuality, he, he he's horrible. Um he is he is probably like the Dallas Cowboys are having the worst offseason by any team by far. Are we the most in the hole as far as money goes? Absolutely not. We are not, you know. Um uh, we won 12 games. Are, are, like, did we win three, four games? No, we didn't. Um, it just feels like the Cowboys are panicking. Panicking for what? You know what I'm saying? I would think at this point, with 12 wins and feeling like we have all of this talent, I feel like now is the time to go for broke. You know? And for some odd reason, it just feels like, it just feels like Stephen Jones insists on ruining this team. That's that's what it feels like. I, I I can't put my finger on um, the type of things that he's doing. But when it comes to branding and marketing and stuff like that, because I'm not going to say that the Cowboys are, are are just terrible at business because they aren't. Um, the model that they set for the NFL as far as marketing and branding and, and TV deals and all of that type of stuff, you get an A. But when it comes to football operations and how a team's supposed to be run, they get a big fat F from me. Big fat F because... It's just not a place that it, we we don't win enough to do the things that we try and do, and what I mean by that is D Law for one being asked to take a pay cut that's absolutely BS. Um, am I a person that feels like we can move on from D Law? Yeah, I do feel that way, you know, but it's not his fault that he out leveraged you when the contracts came out and. You pay too much for him. And that often happens a lot because you guys wait to the last damn minute. You know, you wait to the last minute and you allow the players to get all the negotiation. You get you allow them to get all of the leverage. And then you try and bash them and then you try and sign them. And then you stuck with them for a couple of years. And then you try and bash them again to take a pay cut. When in all actuality, all you had to do was extend them maybe a year or two before their deal was up. At that point, you're getting them for what the market is then, not what the market will be two years later, where the market is going to skyrocket and the market is going to keep going up and keep going up. They keep trying to, oh, let's have this prove it deal or or, or, or let, let's see him prove that he's worth this money. You dummies, you got to be ahead of the curve. They're always behind the curve and then they're asking people for pay cuts. It's almost like, like I said, used car salesmen. Well, if you want to be a Dallas Cowboy, uh, you, you take a pay cut. Like, dog, nobody, nobody care about what you think you're doing. You ain't winning. We ain't winning. You want to know when you take a pay cut or when you take a prove it deal or a small deal when your team is is in the Super Bowl hunt every year? That's not what we are. That's not what we are. If we're lucky, we win the division every three years and we get bounced uh, in the divisional round at the, at best. And that's only happened, I think, what, two or three times? At best, we're getting to the divisional round. Why the hell would I take a pay cut? For one, when you dragged your feet on signing me. And two, when I got you for the market deal, you coming back because you in money trouble. That is not my problem. That's how these players are looking at it. It's not my problem. I earned this money. Whether we believe it or not, D-Law earned that money. Part of earning your money is being able to apply leverage and pressure. And he did so. And they fell for it. And look at him. You gave him all that money when you could have let him walk years ago and got a comp pick. Same thing with Dalton Schultz. They're trying to set Dalton Schultz up for the same thing. We're about to sign a regular ass tight end to a long-term deal. That's what that franchise tag thing is about. 
They're going to try to sign that regular ass tight end to a long term deal. <laughs> uh, I told myself I wasn't going to vent today, but, you know, it, it's just ass backwards. And when I look at it, Stephen Jones is the problem. Stephen Jones ain't never done nothing. Stephen Jones claimed the fame is almost fighting his daddy. Everything was given to that man, so he don't understand. So just imagine him trying to penny pinch somebody that earned their actual keep. He ain't never earned nothing. He ain't never done nothing. Steven ain't done nothing. Steven ain't won nothing. Y'all claim the fame is something that Jimmy Johnson did. You want to know how we all know Jimmy Johnson was the architect? Because you won't add him to the ring of honor. Why won't you add him to the ring of honor? Because then... Everybody will know and they will give him the praise for what he did in the 90s because it was his. He did it. Stephen Jones out here saying stupid stuff like uh, teams are built through the draft and, and, and all of this type of stuff. Jimmy Johnson was willing and dealing and getting trades and getting players and getting coaching. That's, that, that's, the, that's the big part, coaching. You got to have coaching to go along with it. You can have all the players in the world. If you ain't got the guys right there that, that has all the control that, that 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 really that really has the room. The problem is, is that y'all build that y'all build that layer between the player and the coaches so that they can come to y'all because y'all are in control of everything. That's the problem. But yeah, man. I mean, I know that a lot of us fans have been out there like, well, man, we ain't going to Super Bowl until Jerry Jones is, is, is six feet deep. But nah, man, we need to keep him alive because if if Steven has full control, bro, I, I, I really don't want to see what that's like. I really don't. I'm about done with Steven, bro. And it's gotten to the point where I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Cowboy fan and it's my loyalty that's driving me. But as a man, and I'm looking at how they're treating people and they're having fans and media looking at players like their property. Like their property. And it's just something that doesn't sit well with me. Somebody who's never earned anything, who's never done anything, saying this person ain't worth that. Or I need you to take a pay cut because I'm incompetent, because I can't do my job right. I need you to take a pay cut so that I can save face. I need to make you look like a bad guy. I mean, I need to make you look like a bad guy because I'm, I'm shit at my job. I'm terrible at my job. Something ain't sitting right with me, man. But let me know what y'all think in the comment section, man, about the D-Law pay cut thing because I just think it flat out sucks. If you want to cut a player, if you want to move on, move on and be okay with it. Don't bash them. Just move on. Keep it rolling. Keep the operation moving. That's how I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Peace.